Hello, here is yet another valuation for a couple of uh, majors in gold mining. We're going to talk about B2 Gold and SSR mining. Welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. This valuation is based on their Q2 reports. As usual, in our model, we look at discounted per share value after all in sustaining costs, long term debts, and taxes. And in our model, we only look at proven and probable reserve as well as half of measured and indicated resources without taking into account any of the inferred resources, never mind any of further exploration success. So to the extent that the market price might actually correctly value some of the future potential success, the fundamental valuation presented here might be different. But as you see, we like to lean conservative here by looking at relatively more established reserves in the ground. And of course, the data that we plug into the valuation model includes the prices of gold, silver, and copper, the amount of reserves and resources in the ground, the costs of extracting those reserves, we we'll look at all in sustaining costs, we we'll look at long-term debts and taxes, of course, we'll look at per share value with a discount rate of 5%. And we have a bit of a secret sauce on insider shares as larger percentage held by insiders helps to align the incentives of the management with those of the regular shareholders. So starting with the gold price scenarios, as usual, we're going to look at three scenarios with a balanced valuation plugging in the gold price of $1,900. Conservative valuation plugs in the gold price of $1,600 and the optimistic valuation plugs in the gold price of $2,200. As you see, even in our optimistic valuation, we are far from outlandishly optimistic. And uh, personally, I do think that gold price has a good chance of going far beyond $2,200, perhaps over the next couple of years as sentiment improves. Now moving on to the reserves and resources, we see that while both of these companies have a relatively similar market cap, B2 Gold mostly focuses on gold, whereas SSR Mining has a variety of assets including gold, silver, and copper. The numbers presented here also include B2 Gold's 25% ownership of Calibre's assets. And while looking at the numbers, we see that B2 Gold has 8 million ounces of proven and probable reserves of gold and additional or exclusive MI resources of nearly 10.5 million ounces, whereas SSRM has 7.4 million ounces in reserves and additional 5.8 million ounces of resources of gold. They also have silver with over 35 million ounces of reserves and over 62 million ounces of resources. Copper is presented in millions of pounds. Moving on to costs, that's all in sustaining costs, debts and taxes, we see that B2 Gold is relatively less leveraged, whereas SSRM would present a bit of more leverage versus, say, gold price. That leverage is reflected in higher costs, all in sustaining costs, and higher long-term debt which is at $327 million for SSRM and only at $39 million for B2 Gold. And all in sustaining costs is at $1,225 for B2 Gold, whereas for SSRM, it's at $1,395 per ounce. Meaning that the SSRM's margin is smaller, hence, if gold price rises, the margin is going to grow faster in percentage terms. Whereas if gold price declines, again, that margin is going to drop faster as well, illustrating that increased leverage. For taxes, I just assume 25% tax for all of my valuations, just to speed up the job a little bit. And looking at cash, both are comfortably cashed at over half a billion dollars for B2 Gold and $379 million for SSRM. Cash doesn't enter my actual valuation model, but it's useful to look at it to avoid the issues of now extinct gold core. Looking at per share value and discounting, I'm going to use a discount rate of 5%. If you'd suggest a higher discount rate, let me know down in the comments below. So BT Gold has 1.29 billion shares outstanding with a nearly 1%, 0.96% in insider hands. And at current annual production, PNP reserves would last for eight years if you add half of MNI resources, all of that would last for 13 years at current annual production. For SSRM, they have nearly 204 million shares outstanding with 0.6% in insider hands. And at current annual production, reserves would last for 11 years 
If you add half of MNI resources, all of that would last for 15 years. Plugging all of this data into the valuation model, we end up with three scenarios, starting with the conservative scenario, where we plug in the gold price of $1,600 and only look at the proven and probable reserves in the ground. That would give you some sort of a risk measurement showing what might happen to these majors if gold price just drops out of bed. B2 gold is valued as $1.41 and SSRM is valued at $3.60 in this scenario. Moving on to balanced valuation, we plug in the gold price of $1,900 and we still look at only proven and probable reserves in the ground without adding any of the MNI, never mind inferred resources. That gives us a balanced valuation of $2.54 for B2 Gold and $10.22 for SSRM. Currently, the market price, which is usually closest to our balanced valuation, is around 30-40% um, higher than these numbers. That shows that we do like to lean a little conservative in our valuations, and once the market sentiment in precious metals improves, that shows that there is a potential, perhaps, to see prices above our optimistic valuation, which are $5.46 for B2 Gold and $22.51 for SSRM. So do you think it's possible? Do you think it's possible to see significantly higher than uh, these numbers for B2 Gold and SSRM, say, over the next couple of years? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're there, make sure to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Have a fantastic Friday. Bye-bye.